What's up everyone, it's Levi from Wall Street Survivor, and today we are here to talk about Seeking Alpha versus Zacks. Seeking Alpha and Zacks are two of the most popular stock analysis and research platforms that have free and paid versions available to investors. Both have risen to the top of their industries, and today we are here to discuss how they're similar, how they're different, and more importantly, which one is right for you. Now, like I said, both of these platforms are research and analysis tools for individual investors who like to pick their own stocks. They also are both stock rating tools that offer ratings on stocks on a simple one to five scale. Both use professional analysts and research in order to inform their stock ratings and derive information about stocks and other investments so that they can provide tools to investors to better invest, learn, and build their own portfolios. So without further ado, let's get into it and start talking about where Zacks and Seeking Alpha started. Well, in order to do that, quite frankly, we have to start with Zacks because Zacks is much older and was started way before Seeking Alpha, all the way back in 1978 by an MIT PhD named Len Zacks. See, Len was obsessed with Wall Street analysts and how their opinions altered stock prices. So he decided that he wanted to build his own team of in-house analysts who could rank stocks and then provide productized lists and ranks in order to sell to investors so that they could use Zacks information to better analyze and build their own portfolios. This caused Zacks from the very beginning to be very focused focus on Wall Street analysts, analyst ratings, earnings and earnings expectations, and solidified the brand as being very strong. Now Seeking Alpha, on the other hand, started in a completely different manner. See, Seeking Alpha didn't come onto the scene until 2004, and instead of focusing just on Wall Street analysts, the founder of Seeking Alpha wanted to focus on crowdsourcing investment knowledge instead. He wanted to focus on creating a community of investors where analysts at all levels across the world could share and discuss stock information, and he hoped that the best information and the best contributors would rise to the top. Well, fast forward to today, and Seeking Alpha has a 20 million plus strong community of members, and their model has proved out pretty well. So ultimately, even though both companies' goals were stock analysis, the way that they approached getting there and where they put their focus ended up being totally different from each other. Zacks is much more focused on manually put together curated reports where you can get an all-in-one look at a particular stock or fund. Seeking Alpha is much more about customization, tech, looking at things from a bunch of different perspectives and deciding how you want to interpret the information. Their community plus their editors and the technology that they've integrated into their analysis allows you to look at one stock a million different ways. So this starts forming the major difference in philosophy and approach between Seeking Alpha and Zacks, but let's continue on to talk about their most popular products and what they're both most famous for, how they rate their top stocks. So like I've said already, the most famous products that come from Seeking Alpha and Zacks are the continuously updated top rated stocks that investors can look at and easily add to their portfolio or take a deeper dive into. Both companies rank stocks on a scale. Now, the lowest is a strong sell, which means that they think that the stock is going to plummet and investors should get rid of from their portfolio or short as soon as possible. Next is sell, then hold, then buy, then strong buy, obviously meaning that they are recommending investors buy these stocks as soon as possible. Zach's in-house analysts are responsible for rating these stocks based on hundreds of different factors and they use this to produce their Zach's rank and their Zach's number one list. This list is what investors pay for and it gives you a running tally of constantly updated stocks that Zach's thinks are strong buys. From there, they tier this down into different industries, sectors, company sizes, different types of funds, and a number of different factors where they group their number one rated stocks by different types of characteristics so that you can get a more focused view in case you want more specific criteria around how you want to analyze these number one ranked strong buy stocks. Seeking Alpha basically has the same thing and their most popular product is their top rated stocks. Again, the scale goes from strong sell all the way up to strong buy, but instead of just having one system and a team of in-house analysts who performs the analysis to rank the stocks, Seeking Alpha uses three different rating systems. A Seeking Alpha author's rating system, 
Wall Street analyst ratings and their most famous quant ratings. And that's a huge difference between these services. The Zax rank is all up to Zax in-house analysts, whereas with Seeking Alpha, you can look at stock ratings three different ways. Their most successful by far is their quant rating. They have a proprietary algorithm that ranks stocks on a certain number of factors and spits out their top rated stock lists by their quant rating. Now, there are two surprising things about the top rated stocks between Zax and Seeking Alpha. First of all, historically, they have a very similar average annual return. And second of all, that average annual return more than triples the average rate of return of the stock market in general. And that's why both of these companies have risen so far to the top of their industry is because their stock rating system consistently on average identifies what stocks are going to outperform the market and which stocks are going to underperform. Like I said, Zax has been around a lot longer than Seeking Alpha, so they do have a little bit more data. Zax's strong buy stocks since 1988 have an average annualized return of 25.1%, whereas the general market returns on average 7 to 10% per year. Seeking Alpha has only been offering their strong buy stock since 2010, but since 2010, over the last 12 years, they have averaged an annualized return of 27% for their top rated quant stocks. So over the past 12 years, while Seeking Alpha has been around, the quant stocks have done better on average than Zacks have, but keep in mind, Zacks again has been around a lot longer and that both are basically tripling the average annual return that you expect from the stock market. And that's why people pay for these services. Both have a free version, but Zacks Premium is where you're gonna get Zacks number one list and Zacks Strong Buys. Seeking Alpha also has a free account, but you're not gonna get Seeking Alpha's quant ratings that on average are tripling the returns of the stock market right now unless you pay for it. So if you're already interested in checking out Zacks or Seeking Alpha, make sure you check out the links in the description below for exclusive free trials on both services. Otherwise, I'll keep breaking it down for you. But if not, stick around to the end of the video and I'll make sure you know which one is the best service for you. So now that we've talked about both Zacks and Seeking Alpha's rating system and their top rated stocks lists, which are by far the most popular things on their platform, let's talk about a few other features and how Zacks and Seeking Alpha differ and where they're similar in these areas. The next feature we're gonna talk about is research. So with research, it's pretty easy to differentiate the benefits and the drawbacks of Zax versus Seeking Alpha. Zax is just the better option if you want a simplified research report all in one place that's pretty easy to read and presents a in-house professional analyst view of a company that they have been following and specializing in for many years. Since Zax is older, they offer pretty traditional research and it's great research just in a very traditional form from one perspective. Seeking Alpha is better if you really value a diverse set of viewpoints, you wanna dig into a company from multiple angles, multiple perspectives, and you want to know how an investment stands up from a variety of different types of analyses. It will probably take you more time if you really want to dig into all the research that Seeking Alpha offers, but you can pick and choose what information you want to see and go really as deep as you want. So if you're the type of investor that wants a simple report by a professional analyst all sort of laid out in front of you, then Zax is the right option to go as far as research. And if you're the type that likes to learn a bunch of different people's opinions, look at analysis from all different types of angles and choose what kind of information you want to be able to digest, then Seeking Alpha is definitely the right platform for you. So that's research. Now, as far as other features go, both of these platforms have pretty built out education centers where you can read articles and find similar sets of information about finance and investing. Where Seeking Alpha really has Zach's beat is on the live news and coverage. Because Zach's in-house analysts are all dedicated to stock analysis and Seeking Alpha pays crowdsourced analysts for their stock analysis, Seeking Alpha has a lot more overhead dedicated to editors who can keep up with real-time news and the markets. And so Zach's can't really compete with Seeking Alpha as far as live news coverage. Another benefit that Seeking Alpha has over Zacks is the portfolio analysis for your live portfolio. With Zacks Premium, you can rebuild your portfolio within Zacks and it will analyze all your holdings for you. But with Seeking Alpha, that process is completely automated. You can link your brokerage to Seeking Alpha Premium and it will be able to provide instant and constantly updated analysis on your portfolio. Okay, we've made it this far with Seeking Alpha and Zacks. We've talked about some of the similarities and differences between the platforms and how they differ in their approach to stock research and analysis. But the bottom line is, 
what's the price? Surprisingly, the price is very similar between these options. Like I said, they both do have free versions, but they really don't let you access too, too much through their free versions. So we're gonna talk about the price differences between their premium versions. Zach's Premium, which gives you access to Zach's number one list, where you get to see all the stocks that have traditionally tripled the average return of the market, currently costs $249 a year or $20.75 per month. They do, however, offer a 30-day free trial of that Zach's Premium service. Seeking Alpha comes in just a hair under the price point of Zach's. You can get Seeking Alpha Premium with their highly sought-after quant-rated stocks that have been traditionally over-tripling the average annual return of the stock market, all for $240 a year or just under $20 at $19.99 a month. However, their free trial is only 14 days versus Zach's 30-day free trial, so that's also something to consider. And that's the bottom line, but just to add a little bit of my personal experience with both of the platforms, I think Zach's curated list and their research reports are awesome. They have several different reports that they constantly keep updated that you can sign up to receive via email, but I wouldn't necessarily browse through their website and use their stock analysis that way. Seeking Alpha, on the other hand, is almost the exact opposite. I love the UI and the interface of their site. I consistently log into my Seeking Alpha Premium account to read up on stock news, dive into stock analysis, and find different ways in which I can research stocks. I love the customization aspect of it and how I can automatically link my portfolio. And of course, I love the quant ratings that are only available through Seeking Alpha Premium. Ultimately, both platforms are great. I use both often. Zacks is more of a traditional traditional style stock analysis platform where the research is all performed by in-house professionals and you're given a sort of unified front. This is Zach's opinion on this stock. Their analysis is simple, easy to read, and curated constantly by their professionals, but it's not the same at all as Seeking Alpha's. Seeking Alpha is much more focused on sentiment, crowdsourcing information, using algorithms and technology in order to investigate and analyze stocks from multiple different perspectives. I love the customization with Seeking Alpha. It's where I go when I really want to dig into a stock and find out as much information as possible. So if that sounds like the type of analysis that you like, then Seeking Alpha is probably the one that's right for you. Hopefully this video helped you understand how Seeking Alpha and Zacks are different from each other and ultimately which one is better for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the Wall Street Survivor channel. Check out the links in the description below if you're interested in signing up for either Zacks or Seeking Alpha and I'll see you guys in the next video.